it's a lot of things that doesn't work on your personality type and this is a time that you're gonna have to kind of ignore that you're gonna have to get uncomfortable so that you can be comfortable again the first time matter of fact the second time that I got laid off because the first time I got laid off I had lived in housing that went according to my income so when I got laid off I just took my layoff letter to the office and said I'm no longer making money and my my rent literally went to zero thank God for those places I, that's why I hate when people look down at people that live in places that give like assistance or it's for people who aren't making very much money because I, I was once that person and without that I would have been in a jam the first time because the second time when I got laid off I was living in an apartment that didn't go by income and I was expected to pay my entire rent even though I went and showed my 90 day letter that said in 90 days I was getting laid off. Hey y'all this is Tamika the face behind Hey HR. I thought on the last video I was thinking to myself okay we had the last video for this layoff series but then I came up with one more so there's gonna be one more video after this one about layoffs but for this video we're gonna talk all about rehiring after layoffs so if you want to know is it possible to get rehired after a layoff or what does that look like for you and for the company from an HR perspective then definitely keep watching So rehiring after layoffs is so, so possible. It's just not going to happen immediately. A lot of people will see that, okay, I've been turned from here, so I'm going to apply to this role now. It just doesn't happen that way. Most times if someone is doing a company, I'll, I'll say if companies are doing layoffs, it's to save money. So they're not going to just bring you on in another capacity at the organization. Hate to say it that way. I will tell you that through this series of talking about layoff trends and predicting layoffs, it's going to be very, very helpful for you to watch those videos so that you can understand that more. Now I'm just going to talk to you about rehiring and, and just know that it's just not going to be immediate. I would wait a quarter or two minimum because sometimes it can be longer before I start trying to apply back at that company. They're just not going to hire. I don't care if jobs are posted online. Ignore that guys. Like, I already talked about that in a previous video. The jobs posted on the company's website does not mean that they're hiring. Another thing is don't look at a job posting that they may have tied with Indeed or LinkedIn and it shows you how many applications and you immediately think, well, they've got all of these applications. No, no, no. Those aren't valid either. What's valid is what's in their applicant tracking system and that's normally not showing on LinkedIn or Indeed. LinkedIn and Indeed goes by how many people actually clicked on that job. Not everybody that clicks on it applies. There's some people that apply and click on it again. So sometimes it's just a false number. So I would ignore that. But typically critical hires happen first. If there's someone that we let go and we realize, man, the company has been failing in this area since then. This really impacted our revenue. This really has caused a high turnover because all of employees we left weren't equipped to work without this person or without this position. Then those critical hires are going to happen first. Um, and it's not going to be a whole bunch of them. They're going to take their time with hiring people again. So it's whichever company really affected or really directly affected the company's goals, they'll be prioritized. Departments that have the most work and the least manpower or support, like they, if they don't have enough people on hand, they might not have enough systems. They might not have enough processes to make the systems work, whatever it may be then they already directly impacted the company. And so as a result, they've been a direct impact, impact on how much money they can generate. And if these people are like laying people off because man, we're not generating enough money, then obviously they wanna try to save that area. They wanna stop that bleed or at least cover it up a bit so it's not just bleeding everywhere. So the plan is, okay, we'll rehire these people first because we're bleeding in this area without these people, this processes, these systems working efficiently. Another thing with rehiring after layoffs is that if you weren't performing well when they laid you off, you probably ain't ever coming back. Laying you off was probably a convenience so that I don't have to go through the entire process of formally terminating you, of having conversations, of giving you expectations, of managing you out the door is what we would call it in HR. And so if you know like I wasn't performing well, I just wasn't doing really good. I was not on top of things the way I should be. I would just look at going to another company and not that same company that laid you off. I will tell you that you can definitely know if you're eligible, if you are being terminated, I'll say, or if you're being laid off. Let me change that. 
if you were being laid off, do put to performance. You know that because just look at your last conversations. Look at your last performance review. Look at the interactions you had with leadership before time. Look at some of the trends of what you've done before. Does it match what you were doing right before you were laid off? It's very, very important for you to know that if you just weren't performing well, it doesn't mean you can't work in an industry. It can't mean your career is over. Just choose a different company. Now, the biggest thing I want you to know with being rehired after layoff, your networking is huge, y'all. Quit sleeping on networking. Like, I did a video all about networking. All about networking. And I'll post it here or tag it here. And I'll also put, put it at the end of this video. Networking is huge. You know, I hear introverts go, oh my God, that's too much for me. I don't want a people. Do you want a paycheck? Because there are ways that you can do it as an introvert and not necessarily have to be like shaking hands and giving hugs all day and being in front of folks face there's just tons of ways that you can network it does not mean that you have to be completely out of your comfort zone and don't forget that extroverts we're out of our comfort zone too because we get so exhausted from people that we want to breathe or sometimes we know that every time we go to this meeting somebody knows that we're always talking and being social they're asking us for the same favor over and over that we can't produce there's a lot of things that doesn't work on your personality type and this is the time that you're going to have to kind of ignore that you're going to have to get uncomfortable so that you can be comfortable again and so networking is going to be pivotal look at like non-traditional avenues to grow your network look at those professional groups on facebook join those professional groups on linkedin revamp your linkedin profile and make it a little bit better but to help you out with your linkedin profile i have a linkedin checklist that you're more than welcome to have and you can use that to help you figure out what is it that I need to do on my LinkedIn profile. At this time, you're not working for a company, so be bold about it. Be okay with being bold about it. Don't feel bad to reach out to that old coworker that you haven't seen in a while, but you really enjoyed working with them. If you got a phone number, email, or you can find them on LinkedIn, like just send a message and say, hey, hope all is well. I really miss working with you. I see that you work at so-and-so now. I got laid off from such and such, and here's my resume. If you know about anything, let me know. Be okay if people don't know about something. Not everybody knows, but that doesn't mean that because they didn't know at that moment, they don't know in the future. So I think that's another thing is that people go, why reach out to her? She said, no, she didn't have anything. She probably didn't have anything then, but she damn sure can have something in the future and reach out to you to say, hey, I've got something for you now. Reach out to those folks who got laid off with you. Sometimes they've already used their network and made things work and then they're looking for someone to join a team with your skill set, but they didn't think of you because they didn't know you got laid off too or they thought you already found a job somewhere else. So reach out to your old network of people that you used to work with who probably got laid off with you and see if they know about any other opportunities as well. Bring attention to how you can impact the company. When you reach out to them, let them know, hey, you know, at such and such, I did X, Y, and Z. So I was just wondering if you needed that kind of help there or if you knew someone that did. Or, hey, I applied to a job. I just saw that you updated your job history on LinkedIn to say that you work um, in this company and I thought they had this job opening and I applied can you help me with any of that and then just don't be afraid to reconnect with old co-workers period ones that didn't get laid off with you and ones that did like you would be surprised if people how many people have connections be vulnerable be okay reaching out to people you haven't talked to in a while be okay reaching out to people who know somebody that knows somebody and maybe you've never talked to them but you've worked through somebody else through them all this time and then you're like hey I, you know i always heard about you and i just wanted to see if you know about anything like be okay being uncomfortable so that you can get comfortable again i just really wanted to give you guys some tips on being rehired after layoffs and to let you know from an hr perspective what that success rate can or cannot look like and so i really hope that you found this video helpful if you know someone that got affected by a layoff please share this video with them so that they can know how they can get rehired now that they're laid off so that they can grab that LinkedIn checklist. I'll put the link to it below. And that's just the start of it all. So just be okay knowing that this is just the start of a new beginning. Layoffs are uncomfortable. You probably were in a jam. You are really having a hard time when this happened. Don't think for a second that I don't know. First time, matter of fact, the second time that I got laid off. Because the first time I got laid off, I had lived in housing that went according to my income. So when I got laid off, I just took my layoff letter to the office and said, I'm no longer making money. And my my rent literally went to zero. Thank God for those places. I, that's why I hate when people look down at people that live in places that give like 
assistance or it's for people who aren't making very much money because I, I was once that person and without that I would have been in a jam the first time because the second time when I got laid off I was living in an apartment that didn't go by income and I was expected to pay my entire rent even though I went and showed my 90 day letter that said in 90 days I was getting laid off. I worked in, in government contracting so they had to go by the Warren Act and so they made sure to tell us ahead of time like hey you're going to be laid off in 90 days and it was difficult. My sister's house had just burned so she had just moved in with me. I had my small daughter. We had just gotten our dog rally. Um, I had a car payment. I had rent. I had lights. I had utilities. I had everything like any normal person would and it took me a minute like I literally had to write resumes like crazy so when I talk about writing resumes sis been doing this long before she even started HR career I was writing resumes like crazy I was babysitting like crazy I was volunteering like crazy to just increase my skills and not get bored sitting in the house I was in a jam like all the bills were left on me and it was hard it was uncomfortable yeah I cried many nights I cried many nights. But please don't think that I'm just doing this video because, oh, she's HR. She doesn't get... No, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. I can't tell you how many times I miss sleep at night because I'm like, how am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to do this? I begged my office to say, hey, please give me some time. Like, I was in a jam too, so I know what it's like. I want you to know that that was just the start of the beginning for me. That told me right there, you know, yeah, Mika, you've been doing this, but you really want to work in HR. And, and that forced me to start in my career. I took a big pay cut starting in my career. I was only working part time, but I had already not worked for six months. I was like, I need to start working. But before I got laid off, I was making $27 an hour. I took a part time job at $12 an hour and it was only 20 hours a week. And it was hard. I can't tell you how many times I mean, I truly follow Dave Ramsey plan and eat beans and rice, peanut butter and jelly. It was difficult. I made it through. So can you. I hope that you found some value in this video to consider subscribing because as you can see, I'm not here just to be like another HR person telling you XYZ. I'm here to help you. I'm here to see all of us elevate. If you believe in me enough to subscribe, then I believe that I should give you back something which is value. For those of you who are returning, I thank you so much for returning. If this is your first time watching a Hey HR video, then I'm Tamika Green, the face behind Hey HR, and a 10 year HR professional who giving you nothing but the real and a little Southern Geechee in the midst of it all. At the end of the day, I cannot wait to see you guys on the next video.